So I go through all these changes and all these people coming in and say, can we be with you? And I look at them and I say, uh, I, no. And they say, why can't we be with you? I said, because I'm with me. Can you be with yourself? And they said, yes. I mean, what do you need me for? Remember when you was in school and you had a bully in school and somebody went by and the bully went by and said, uh, are you looking for trouble? And you what? Uh, and you said, no, uh, no, I wasn't looking for no trouble. Uh, that's calling you up. Is that right or wrong? It calls your mind up to start looking for trouble. You're not thinking about looking for trouble until someone comes to, they yell off in your head, are you looking for trouble? And you say, uh, uh, uh and he says, yeah, he's looking for trouble. And pretty soon, uh, uh, you start looking for trouble. You don't know why he was looking for trouble. Uh, a part of it. That's, in other words, here, you've got a psychotic episode with 150 people. You've got 150 people running through Hollywood, playing music, smoking dope, having sex orgies, riding motorcycles. All I was was one little small music group called the Family Jams, man. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. And not only that, all these girls that you keep attributing me to were just girls that happened to be in their subculture that was in that free love trip. And the only reason they're still with me is because I've never lied to them. I don't lie, man. I quit lying a long time ago. I ain't got no reason to. The time's done. No, that's part of the reason. That's part of the reason. Part of the reason. Another reason. Uh, yeah. No, there's, there's, no, there's a lot of other reasons. There's a lot of other reasons. Uh, yeah. Ah, damn, I don't know whether you'll understand it or not. Uh, a young kid's walking down the street. A cop comes up to him and says, shines a flashlight in his face and says, hey, boy, up against the wall over there. And scares the kid. He gets up against the wall and he says, what are you doing out here? It's after 10 o'clock at night. You out here burglarizing stores? No, sir. I'm not burglarizing stores. The cop is a rookie cop and he doesn't realize what he's doing is he's programming this young mind to burglarize stores. Being a juvenile delinquent, I went through that and I burglarized stores and ended up in reform school. That way I figured out why that happens that way. You get? The cop is practicing his procedure. You get? So they come to the ranch and they raid the ranch. And they say, are you causing trouble, Manson? And I say, you can't call me up to that. <laughs> no, I'm not causing trouble, and you're not programming my mind in no trouble either. Fear don't work on me anymore. You can pile ten dead bodies up there and bleed all day. It don't bother me a little bit, you dig? In other words, I'm not affected by no fear games. You don't set my brain with fear, you dig? So I don't realize that they're setting everybody else's mind around me. I don't realize I'm holding his majesty. I don't realize what majesty is. I don't even, you know, I'm a dumb kid that just got out of prison. I just done 22 years in prison from 1944 to 1967. I got no idea what's going on outside. I'm at that ranch just like I was in the joint. I'm still walking the same line that I was walking in the prison. I'm walking outside. I don't even do nothing unless I get someone on the point. In other words, like, I'm not breaking no law now. You're going to interview Sandy, right? You ask Sandy, I used to do this, and they say, what's that? I say, one positive thought. She said, what's that? I said, I never break the law again. The old man Carpus, remember he was talking about Creepy Carpus? Creepy told me, he said, son, you want to stay out of jail? I said, yes, sir. I've been trying all my life to stay out of jail. He said, it's a simple thing. You want to stay out of jail? Don't break the law. If you don't break the law, you don't have to go to jail. It's that simple. And I said, well, I'll, you know, I'll try it. And I tried it. And, and there's a whole lot of people that know me that are still in the truth with me will witness and tell you, I did not break the law. Uh, I had everything to do with it. I was on the edge of everything that happened. And I affected everything that happened. But unknowingly, I didn't realize the effect I was having on people. I never, you know, I never in a second flashed about being a walrus. When he says I was Walrus is Paul, I never realized I was in, now watch this, I was in a cell five years with an Eskimo. You know what his name was? Murphy. <laughs> I swear to God, man. You know, in other words, like, 
I've been in the minds of millions of many, many, many people, man. But I have never been in my own. Because I'm not in my own mind until I get outside. I'm living in the mind of the guards. I'm living in the mind of the people next to me. The people down the hallway, I got to balance everything around me to stay alive. In other words, in prison, you got to get along with everybody to stay alive. If you don't, you get crisp and crossed in there and somebody's going to push you over the edge, you dig? The more to it was the ranch, the whole ranch, the ranch hands. We were all hands to a blind head. Jo George was the head. He was a blind head. Yeah, he was there, and we were hands to the head. Why did the go there? Why did the go to that house that night and kill those? All right, because uh, 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 first of all, Doris did. Oh, uh, this is going to get heavy. During the Korean War, uh, the United States lost the Korean War, but they didn't tell the public. When they lost the Korean War, they had to give up their sex to the Koreans. And Doris Day was the prize. So Doris Day was the end of, of uh, the, uh, the Korean War with Reverend Sun and Moon coming over here. So when I go to get into the music, uh, the Jew rejects me on the universal level from Cary Grant's parking space because I won't use the black people. And I won't crossbreed with uh, 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 Wendy Mandela uh, and get in the middle of, of a sex orgy that they're running for their dollar bill to build kibbutzes in Israel so they can have machine guns and Arabs that got rocks. So when I passed on that, I fell into the Beach Boys. The Beach Boys are being run by the Italian mafiosos that are trying to break through the mafia coming to the East Coast that the Mexicans kicked him out of Rosarita and told him, stay out of California because we don't like you. So uh, the mafia, so uh, uh, when I went into Dennis Wilson's uh, Beach Boys, I said, you owe me money for music. Where's the money? They put me onto the Italian business manager. He, I said, don't I get something for this music here? And he said, no, you get nothing. He said, sue me. I said, I won't sue you. I'll bomb your car, man. I'll blow your house up. He said, I'll call New York and I'll call the Mafia. Well, I don't, I know a lot of the dudes in the Mafia, so I backed off of him. That's why I moved in with Dennis. You owe me. You won't pay me on one level, boop, I'll sneak you on another level. In other words, you're going to pay me sooner or later because I'm that guy that always gets paid. And I always pay. You know, in other words, like, I walk a, a line, you know, and in this heart. And how is that going to be? Huh? How is that going to be? And how is that going to be? Where are we going? Do you want me ready with that camera? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me ready with that camera? Okay. You're telling us about the other reasons why. that are afraid of the black people. 
And, and in other words, you've got to deal with all the way back to the Confederacy, back with Abraham Lincoln again, you know, you've got to go all the way back through that, you know, in other words, like,